with beer. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Ketta. And Lady Beer coming at you with another back hair waxing edition of Cat, Cat with, with beer. beer. We're talking about music today. Yes, about especially specifically about Japanese music. Yes. In comparison maybe to abroad, but uh, there are also a couple of Japanese music genres that only exist here in no, Japan. That's right, that's right. So everyone, keep your ears propped up oh to listen goodness. to some of the things we're going to drop on you. We're going to also drop quite a lot of names and song titles and we recommend you to look those up. Unfortunately, we won't be able to play mm. them live on the podcast podcast but that gives you more time to look them up in your own time as well have a little look see yourself um so music in japan catty cat what's what the what the thing what's like the very first japanese music that you came in touch with um the first one that i which i heard knowing it was japanese music was um the song child prey by dire on gray Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a great track, it's isn't good it? Good start into it. I used it as the background music in my first ever action show reel. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So it already yeah. influenced you quite a lot. Yeah, very much so. It sounds yeah. great, man. There's, there's. Okay, so when I think of Japanese music, mm. generally, uh, now that I've been in Japan, it's a bit different. But to me, always Japanese music always had that sound of that la 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 uh. la. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That visual K. <laughs> It was J either that rock. or that yep. J rock kind of like, ga, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it was always how I. <laughs> okay. Okay, you had a different start than, than I did. Tell me about your start. My first start was generally all the, like the Sailor Moon songs because I was performing them with my musical mm. group. So it was more like very 80s inspired songs. Mm. Some of the songs that all the voice actors were singing were actually songs that were popular during that time in, in the 80s and 90s. Or what is it? 90s, actually. Sorry, Sailor Moon came out in the 90s. So it's very much... 90s kind of but kind of it still had like in my opinion very much of an 80s touch to it mm. so that kind of music was the yeah, first one I heard it was like that. very very soft and kind of like cheerful yeah, right. but yeah, kind of very friendly yeah, and keeping yeah, it right. very positive as well mm. so that was like the first music I listened to and what I found interesting was I have no 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 idea what they're talking about but <laughs> I felt something yeah and I think that got me inspired. And then I started listening to Ayumi Hamazaki, oh, right. Utada Hikaru. Oh, right. And then I moved a little bit into the J-Rock, Deer and Grey, Lunacy, Ex Japan. Yeah, yeah. The things that you could get your hands on during that time in Germany. I wasn't able to get all the th- oh, some really the... recent stuff. Mm. Everything I could get my hands on was kind of old by the time I got it. It was it the same the with me. It was the same with me. Everything mm. It's been my experience that generally Japan and the West are 10 years behind one another mm. on their respective things. So the West is 10 years behind Japan on Japan's trends, but Japan's 10 years behind the West on the West trends. Well, five so. to 10 years, yeah, yeah, definitely, depending on which area you're going into. Yeah, yeah, Who's yeah. your favorite musician now? Oh, my Japanese musician? Uh, there's a Japanese band I really like called Devaloof. Everyone's heard me talk about them many times. I don't think you'll like them very much. They're a deathcore band. Ooh, Doesn't Devil really Oof. seem... Doesn't seem very much up Kathy Cat's alley to me. We could play some. They, they, they sound disgusting, just so that you know. But that's <laughs> that's my jam, you know. So. Death aloof. Death, yeah, death, death aloof. aloof. How about yourself? Baby beard, of oh, course. Oh, bless you. Thank you, sweetheart. What a rock star. <laughs> Kathy Cat's got Favorite my back. Band. What Baby a superstar. Baby beard, of course. That's oh. my group in case you're a new person listening to this. Thank you, sweetie. What a good girl. Mentioning Baby Beard, how did the audition go? Oh, girl, we just, one of the girls left. We auditioned to find a new girl. We found a new girl. She's excellent. Very exciting. Go on over to the socials and that at babybeard underscore Japan. You can see all the things. It's awesome. Very excited. We're, we're very excited about her, actually. She's very, very good. Mm. Mm-hmm. We were worried for a bit there because um, we were auditioning and she was literally the last person who auditioned. Oh. She was the very last one. But yeah, before that, we were kind of going, oh man, okay, we're going to have to, okay, we're going to have to figure out some something, something because we hadn't found someone who really was a perfect fit. And then she walked in and we were like, oh, oh thanks, Jesus. Yes. So, she was days. like the miracle you've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah she was great. Fantastic. Yeah. So, but I'm um, also, apart from Baby Beard, mm. um, I actually <laughs> am very connected to, I think, music that I listen to at a certain time. Mm. I f- fell in love, for example, with El Garden. But then I realized when I was listening to them, they had already disbanded. And it was so sad. I don't know El Garden. Who are they? El Garden. Um, They were El Garden. Oh, all right. <laughs> they're, they're, I would say they are the old one Ocarock. It's kind oh, of okay. that kind of type of music. Okay. 
they would like mix some English into their songs. I also loved Kimura Kaira. She had like a very quirky, weird kind of style. Now she's singing more like songs for younger audiences, like more towards kids. But she used to sing these really quirky songs of like a cross to crocodile that ate a bird or something. Oh, right. Oh, that sounds and nice. Course, that sounds like a kid's song to me. Yeah, it was. I guess at the time it was more quirky. And now okay. that she's she's a mother, then it's more that towards kids, which, uh, OK. Uh, but I did actually also love Caddy Pamyu Pamyu. Oh, the Pamyu, yeah. She is like the, the Japanese now, uh, Lady Gaga. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, that's a good comparison, actually. Yeah. She wrote that first song of hers, that pom 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 that she released. Yeah, yeah that kind of style. Tell you what, when you're not in Japan yet and you see that music video, mm. that is the most Japanese looking thing you could possibly ever imagine. They made it viral for a reason. Yeah, it's it beautiful. It's... I guess I like groups are light slightly different. Yeah. Like so some I like listening to all genres, J pop, rock, whatever, but I like those who are slightly different. Yeah. Deathcore, yeah. you like to listen to deathcore? At least listen to a lot of deathcore, a lot of black metal. I guess metal. if you sent me some recommendations, and I shall listen to <laughs> them. God bless you. All right, so, no worries. Um, what are some common characteristics today? You know what I'm saying? What, my brain is not 100 percent switched on today. I'm so sorry for all the uh, goofs there. Maybe Mine. I was already was. thinking too much in German recently. I had a phone call with my mom. Should not do that before the podcast. Oh, no, your mom's wonderful. She's a good woman. She is definitely. What are some common characteristics of music popular in Japan that you find striking? All right. So as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, is the uniquenesses. So Japanese music versus versus foreign music. The comparison. Japanese music tends to emphasize the melody. Yeah. Whereas Jap or Western music, I'm sorry, emphasizes the rhythm. So for most oh. Japanese consumers, the uh, the melody is considered the most important part of the whole flipping thing, with a lot of emphasis on the vocals, which doesn't sound that different from how you listen to Western music, but yeah. But, turns out it is. Oh. Yeah. There's one thing that I noticed, even when I was a kid, 13, listening to Japanese music. One thing is missing in a lot of Japanese songs that you once you notice it, you notice it. Mm -hmm. And that is bass. That's interesting. A lot of Western songs have some very heavy bass. Okay. While Japanese songs have a very light bass. That's interesting, really. Yeah. And that's one of the things that the absence of like strong like bass that like hits you. Once you once you see it, you see it kind of thing. Really? I've never thought of that. That hang on now, just upon contemplation. That is very interesting because when I think of Japanese music, it always sounds to me like it's kind of pitched. I don't know, up half a mm -hmm. step mm -hmm. compared with Western music. So maybe, okay, maybe that's a contributing factor. I have my own little theory about that well, one. Well, tell us your theory. <laughs> that's because we're, we're living in a society where you try not to annoy your neighbors too oh, much. Okay, and see. if you have like some heavy boom, yeah, boom, 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 true that. boom, 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 you're yeah. going to annoy your neighbors true a that. lot. So that song, true you that. might not be able to tune up to your favorite <laughs> volume. Oh, good so point, taking actually. a little bit of the bass off makes it less offensive to people around you. That's a but great that's point, actually. That's my own actually. theory. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone in the study is like, hmm, mm. very contempl contempl contemplative yeah, yeah, spaces yeah. here That's right That's actually now. a great point, actually. It's, uh, yeah, not annoying your neighbors, not annoying those around you is an integral part of the culture here. Mm. Whereas in the Western world, we're the other way around, aren't you? Yeah, we're we like, yeah, it's all about mm. me. Boom, 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 boom. You ideally want to drive with your car down the road and just have the bass up yeah. so much that your car is You want is people to hear jumping. you from six blocks away, just, mm. Mm. Doom, mm. drop on that mm. bass. Mm. Mm. All right. Billboard Japan, the Hot 100 of 2022. All right. Was Zangyo Sanka by Aime. Yep. And I guess what? That is not just a song. It is the opening song of Demon Slayer. Mm -hmm. And Demon Slayer was a massive hit, especially during the pandemic. Pretty oh. much everyone had the time to watch all the <laughs> many, many episodes of Demon Slayer. So I'm pretty sure most of the audience will probably know what Demon Slayer is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't, time to Google. I was going to say, you're not no taco if you don't know what Demon Slayer is, I don't think. Yeah. Um, Number two is WXY Tani Yuki. Number three, I don't know how to explain that. Beetle Goose? Beetlejuice, Beetle, uh, Beetle 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 Maybe. I think so. Beetlejuice by Yudi. Number four is uh, Mix Nuts by Official Hige Dandism. And number five is Dry Flower by Yudi. Yudi did well. Yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> we have kind of a mix. Some things that are pretty much unique to Japan is you can have anime songs in mm. your top ten. Mm. And you can have songs done by comedians. 
In the top ten. Yeah, right. Good point. You can. Yeah, don't really get that so much abroad. <sighs> yeah, the comedy song abroad would be like the internet hit, like the Gangnam Style type internet mm. hit, um, or the I'm on a boat. But that sort of thing isn't normally listed in the uh, top 100, is it? Mm, Maybe in this much. generation it increasingly is. I'm not sure. But... I mean, I mean, hey, more meme songs are coming out right now. Oh, so that's right. That's, a, that's, that's right. Thing. Ma, let's move to the most popular or most known genre to most. It's J-pop. J-pop, Japanese pop. But saying Japanese pop, I mean, that's like saying Japanese people. That covers the entire range, doesn't it? J-pop so. is like, yeah, the light-hearted kind of mm. music that is mm. easy to listen to on the radio. Rock and roll, like light rock and roll music is J-pop. Idols, they're J-pop. Mm. Yeah, some pleasant EDM is probably counts as J-pop. You know, everything Vocaloid probably counts as J-pop. A lot of J-pop songs in the in that genre, yeah, mm, definitely. Mm, 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 mm. So J-pop is like the most easiest to listen to, kind of light, lighter yeah, kind of music. Easy, Not easy as heavy as what you're it? trying yes, to promote. That's yeah. right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not as heavy as my boys in Devil Oof. Oh um, my. Yeah, it's easy listening, right? Mm -hmm. Japanese easy listening, yeah. But also the idols will count as J-pop as well. Yeah. So with the, you, see, you said there's a heavy focus on the rhythm and the melody yeah. as one component of that. That's right. Then the composition of the music, Japanese music is basically composed of an A melody, mm -hmm. a B melody, mm -hmm. and then a chorus. It's a chorus. Which is like the climax that keeps repeating. <laughs> That's, but that's kind of standard pop music structure, really, um, isn't it? Which got recently broken up a lot by K-pop, right? Because they have oh, okay. so many speed changes in their songs that it became just such a K-pop thing. Do they thing. really? Mm, that's one of the things that like K-pop makes uh, or became so interesting or made K-pop so interesting is that they have so many speed shifts in their oh. songs and they said part of this and there's a part of that and then they change that up again. So... That's that a... is interesting. I don't. Yeah, when I consume music, I tend not to think about it very academically. I just have a nice time. But now, upon contemplation, thinking about it, yeah, you're right. Mm. So I'm gonna throw this thing out there, and Throw you it. let me know what you think about it. So what there is a saying that Western music seems to place more importance on the groove or mm -hmm. like the the melody, while the Japanese music is more about the message of the lyrics from whose perspective the song is being sung. Agree or don't agree? I don't know, man. Lyrics. I mean, look, a lot of Japanese music to me lyrically seems to revolve around this notion of everybody let's do our best and let's mm. you know fighting good and gumbody must and mm. you know it's hard but we're gonna give it everything we've got mm. and this that same theme seems to repeat constantly in japanese music um especially i think in the idol industry yeah idol, idol and anime, and the anime music songs, is very much let's do yeah. our best you know let's get up and do the thing yeah very you, much you like... can do it reach strive for your dreams all yeah, those yeah, kinds yeah. of things that's a very anime very idol anime trope isn't theme, it yeah, yeah. Um, then with a lot of other songs, I find sometimes some of those are very nostalgic of like, yeah. oh, you know, it never worked out with us or I never told X person how I feel about them or, you know, it never really quite happened between us. But I like to think back of it like the the loss of an opportunity sometimes strikes me a little bit in some of the songs. songs in Japan. I mean, we did the episode about dating in Japan. Yeah. And it's kind of a uh, whole the world of romance in Japan. Kind of they mm. approach the whole thing a bit differently from the Western world, don't they? There are two things that might connect a little bit to each other huh. that I think also stand out a lot with Japanese music is the people who are in the music tend to be generally a lot younger. The idols are like old when they're 25, uh. you know, or, you know, everyone is like, it's like a very big focus on like, mm. That schoolgirl age yes. is a is very is a lot centers on that I in think, Japan. Yeah, That's, I think people see that as the golden years of their life. Yeah, in Japan because after that, time. everyone just goes to work and creates a family, and that's it. For me, they were horrendous <laughs> years. I was like, thank God that's over. I was glad school was over. I mean, Me we too. had our episodes on the making of Lady Beard and Kathy Cat. If you haven't right. listened to that yet, be sure to check those out. Yeah, right. But here in Japan, there's a big nostalgia. And you, Probably mm. can see it if you watch anime after mm. a while. You realize why is everything all yeah, everything's of them, about a school? 90% are set in schools. Um, that kind of nostalgia, which means also a lot of music is centered around very young mm. idols, very young girls, um, very young people singing and dancing, which then ties into fact number two Japanese music is less sexualized than Western music. Yeah, I'd agree opinion. with that. There's a lot that. of, if you go to, to Western music, it's very much. More shake in that, that ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we allowed to keep that in? Then we can say shake that ass. 
Shake that peach. Shake that ass. <laughs> Shake that boots. Hey, show me what you got, girl. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of that in Western music, while Japanese music seems to be a little, a little bit more pure around that. Um, so, musical genre that's particular to Japan. Mm. Let's focus on some of those musical genres that are very much particular to Japan. Um, one is kind of new. It's gacha pop. Gacha pop. And that's the pop music that the Japanese are actually listening to. What's trending, what's hot with the youth right now. You go to Shibuya, if you go into a store, that's what you'll hear getting pumped through the speakers mm. a lot of the time. So because the genre of J-pop was just so wide and so many things were in there, recently apparently there's this, a playlist on Spotify that kind of recreated uh, the whole theme around it and just focused on what is actually getting listened to. Yeah. What, who's yeah. actually listening to what, kind of? Yeah. So um, Spotify has kind of started that. It's a viral playlist of Japanese songs that are now popular overseas. Yeah, I never I never know how to probably describe the songs that are actually playing in Japan. Because I just walk around and I hear them and I know that what's well, that. But I can never give them any kind of proper description or comparison with things that are not the actual songs that are actually being listened to. Especially as the trends change. Mm, the trends change in Japan a lot faster also Very than quickly. they do in the West. There is quite a lot of loyalty in the West to some bands that are like, you know. Legacy the old artists. Schools, legacy yeah. artists, exactly. While Japan is more what is new. Yeah, What's who's right the new now. who's the new thing who's yeah. the new thing and again if we focus again on who's the youngest who's coming in there's a lot of focus on like who's who's fresh who's brand new while in the West we have more you know Britney Spears or you know the, the legacy artists, that artists. Have been around for a long time they get their initial pop and then they can you know they keep their career going and then they can calm down for a bit then cycle back in mm. there's a lot of that in the West but less don't so in Japan. see that in Japan I can't think of many sometimes legacy sometimes artists like you, you like know. That. Like lots of, of people can be on TV and stuff, but I just have the feeling that in Japan a lot graduate quite quickly. Like yeah. it was a big thing, like Kodakumi, or like all those like big artists that everyone knows about. Like once they like they officially will quit officially, and then they're gone, and then mm. it creates like a huge hype about them leaving. Mm. But think, then it's on to the next, isn't it? Then ma- yeah. sometimes they might come back, and sometimes they never come back, which mm. is a bit of a shame because I would like, love to have more loyalty for the legacy artists. What? Well, but also, there's this dynamic in Japan when, oh, under the I guess, and we move on to idol culture, yeah. Mm, now under the, there, no idol culture. under the idol culture, oh, and a we lot of things. Go to the idol culture. Well, let me just give you three examples of gacha pop. Oh, okay. So for those who don't not still don't quite know what gacha pop is either you go over to check out the gacha pop playlist Mm -hmm. you are sylvie with idol is the theme song that song is everywhere it's everywhere right now uh imase with night dancer kickback from kenshi yonezu those are three examples of gacha pop I think a lot, the music industry has changed all over the world a lot, though, with the emergence oh, of TikTok. The internet. Yeah, take your of TikTok. The internet. I think that has, like, literally a lot of old songs have been dug up by the TikTok <laughs> grave digger. <laughs> and also, songs now are structured specifically to go viral on the TikTok. Yes. So we're getting to the one phrase wonder. Mm. So it used to be a one hit wonder. Now it's a one phrase wonder because everybody knows the A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and... Yeah, there's a After lot. After that, no one knows the rest of it. Yeah. So you see the, see the artist at the concert, they play that line, everyone sings, then they die. And they get round <laughs> to the next person, then everyone sings, and then they die. You know? so. Yeah, there's a lot of that uh, thanks to TikTok. Also, sometimes just some songs, only one, one short rhythm is known, but not actually the, the singing whole of the yeah, song that's right. and stuff like that. So that's... that's Definitely also made some changes, and a lot of songs start straight. There is no like yes. little melody before they start; as they go straight into the song. That has changed the a music fr- industry in general, not just Japan. A friend of mine who owns a record label, he recommends to all his bands now: don't make songs with long intros because mm. they'll just get skipped. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Get straight, straight to the point. It. Get to the point. Um, um, there's one more thing before idols. Yep. City pop. Ah, oh, city pop. City right. pop. Okay. Tell city us what city pop, pop is. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of like new music, but kind of sampled from songs that were like popular in Japan in the late 1970s, 1980s. They have that kind of 80s vibe hmm. to them. And but they're, ha- they're new songs though, yeah. They're just they're made in the 80s like, style. Sometimes in, some, are, some are new songs made in the 80s style. Sometimes people sample music from the 19, from the 1980s and then use that and re- remix it a little bit and stuff. So it's a good mix of that. It's like a feel. Mm-hmm. Almost city pop is a bit of a mood. Like 
uh, imagine driving through the city and the lights like passing like in a rhythm by and that kind of like music you would listen to with some sort of nostalgia into it. It's kind of, what you imagine that he's playing when you get in the taxi. Sitting at the back of the taxi music. Taxi driver. No, music. more like you're driving after your heart has been broken into the beautiful city full of lights and you think you have hope that one day that person is gonna feel what you feel. Oh, your description was far more poetic than mine was. All right, fair <laughs> yeah, enough. Something like that. Okay. Um, <sighs> okay, I'm going to give three examples of city pop. All right, please. Okay. Foreign artists have also covered this genre because it's very popular now in US and Asia, apparently. Okay. Three songs that are a good example for the city pop genre. Eichi Otaki, Kimi wa Tenen Shoku, Tatsuru Yamashita, right on time. You're doing a good job. Good job. <laughs> Killing it. Good job. <laughs> And Tai Trin, mm. Rainy Blue cover. And Tai Trin has actually appeared in our episode 22. Our homie so, Chin. Yeah, if you want to go check her out, then be sure to check her out there. Mm, so the city the pop genre has been covered by a lot of artists mm. from around the world because it has like, it's a mood. It's a mood. City pop is a mood. Seriously. Are you in a city pop mood often, Kathy Cat? Do you it's often like a- sit in the back of the taxi with watching the lights go by and getting city popular? I think it's like a thing to listen to in the evening when you want to kind of chill okay. and like feel a little bit like chill and have a bit of 80s vibes. That yeah. kind of, it, it, it's a mood. It's I definitely you were about to say have a little bit of ADHD and I was like, wait, what? No, no, uh, 80s vibes, okay. 80 vibes. So next topic is going to be idols. So feel free to take that away. But we have talked about idols a bit more in depth in episode seven of this podcast. Be sure to check that one out. The most <sighs> powerful force in Japanese idol industry Bro. would be Johnny. Yes. That's pretty much an idol machine just for for young adolescent boys. Only boys. They make boy Only bands. Only boys. They make boy bands. Oh, it's like the boy band fabrication boy band machine. factory. So, okay, so let me yes. explain. The key to making a successful boy group, it applies for the girls, obviously with girls, is getting, you know, your group, your number of members, and then getting five different personality types or whatever the number is. They all complement each other and work together as one unit well. Mm. So that's the real skill of being of producing a boys' idol group. That's what Mr. Johnny is very, very good at. Mm. Johnny's is the name of the... Well, we just said that we said that already, didn't we? The name of the biggest boy yes. group company in Japan. Scandal revolving around Mr. Johnny at the moment. He's passed away, but his scandal lives on beyond the grave. Mm. They spoke about it at the UN the other day. I mean, there is a lot of sus things in the background of the entertainment yeah, industry in Japan yeah, in yeah, all genres as well, apparently, unfortunately. Goodness. But yes, Johnny's has created some very, very famous groups. Um, SMAP used to be the biggest one. Mm. Uh, then after that, it was Arashi. Arashi yeah. And now it's probably, I don't know, Kiss My Foot or... Uh, By the way, what a, what a name for a group. Kiss My Feet too. Yeah, or Kinky Kids. Well, that's because that's kinky from Kanto. That's what oh, that's supposed enough. to be, is it not? Oops. Kinky is, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. the kinky air. Sorry Kinky about means that. something different <clears throat> in English, so. It means yeah. something, yeah. Some some of the English titles are a little bit. But Kiss My so, Foot too. Like, seriously, what were I thinking with that name? What were they it's, thinking about? It's very strange. Bump of Chicken? That's They're not idols. But they're, they're not idols, yeah. That was explained to me, Bump of Chicken. It was, it was kind of Japanese English meaning like the last stand of a coward. So like bump as in knock off, of chicken, as in a coward. Uh, I love kind of wrongly used yeah, English and always, but... <laughs> Back to the idols. So they're going to the... So Johnny's is the biggest machine for idol boys. Well, anything 48, 46... <laughs> 48 or 46 is for the 40 girls. 40-something is like the biggest the idol females. machine for the girls. Um, Akimoto... <sighs> Yasushi-san That's was the, the one who came up with this brilliant and kind of terrifying idea of, hey, how can we up the sales of this idol group? I know if you buy our CD, you get something with it. It might be a handshake from your idol. It mm. might be some time you can spend with your idol. Mm. It can be a ticket so you can vote for something or a ticket that you then can enter a lottery to go to a live performance. So he found a very clever way to upsell the CDs Mm. of AKB48, the idol group that he was producing at the time at the start, and it became so huge that it kind of revolutionized or changed or kind of cheated away into the music industry because the Otakus bought like 10, 20, Mm. 50, 100, 500, thousands 
of the same CD, Mm -hmm. just one person would buy many, many copies of the same CD, not to listen to that CD, but to get those tickets, which brought then the idols into the market. And now that system is getting used by all other idol groups as well. So a lot of a lot of idol groups will say, hey, please go buy a couple more hundred of our CDs Mm -hmm. because then we will go up in the charts and then you guys get a ticket for whatever servers we're going to supply on top of that. So in a way, it is a very clever business strategy it's because it has brought business. Mm. AKB into the charts all the time. Mm. But at the same, and then again, if they're exposed to more people, obviously they will then also make more mm. fans. So the fans who bought hundreds of thousands of copies of their CD got them into the t- TV performances, mm. and then they got more fans. Who then also would buy more CDs. So it's no, it snowballed from there. Um. Some people think it's a bit of a way of cheating your way into it because people are not buying it to get the song. They're buying it to get the handshake. Mm. But that is something that keep, uh, people can uh, fight about. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say uh, my opinion on that. So I have a friend who's toured in rock and roll bands. He's Aussie. He's toured in rock and roll bands all over the world for over a decade, right? He worked with a very, very famous metal band. I'm not going to say who. But the leader of that group said to him, what, this, said, this is when he really understood what the business of being in a band was. He was told, I have a merchandise selling business with a musical promotional product. So you go on tour, Mm -hmm. you play the show so that everyone's in a great mood and they buy your t-shirts, yeah? Mm. In Japan, it's actually a handshake selling business or a checky photo Mm. selling business Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with a musical promotional product, Mm. at least from what I can tell. Mm. I think that has really, really changed the market. AKB has changed the market because idols were represented differently before AKB and then once AKB happen a lot of things change and a lot yes. of other idols that's not what everyone does yeah you that's kind of the standard now. Do it now it's the only way to monetize the work yep can't sell the music anymore and a lot of people also if you think about it some live performances are actually going plus minus zero sometimes for some artists so because on the live performance the ticket that's a price but then you also think about it CDs are not really selling so what are you trying to sell make the performances more expensive, sell some items, upsell something. Because in the end, it's not the same as it used to be. A lot of people can just listen to songs for free on Spotify and such now. But also the other dynamic that's important for people to understand is with the idols, there is... One of the other things you're really selling as well is the relationship or the perceived relationship between the fan and the artist. And then, so that way, you can have an entire career. If you only get, say, 100 fans... One fan is going to come and, you know, buy 10 checky photos. So you might only have 100 fans at a show, but you'll make a 1,000 sales. So it's a brilliant business it's model. It's a brilliant business just... model. And also I remember there was this one idol group who was like, hey, we're trying to get into the top 10 charts. So please buy more of our CDs. Mm. So the same people who were there, and it weren't that many, they were kind of like, almost peer pressured a little bit into yeah, yeah, buying yeah. more CDs so they would get them into the charts. And then later on, they would say, oh, we were like 100, 500 CDs short of getting like space number 10 in the charts. Yeah. But, you know, thanks for trying that kind of... There's a lot of that kind of peer pressure that goes <laughs> on from the artists to the fans, isn't it? It's a strange thing. It's a strange it's, dynamic. But again, as you can tell with the idol part that we're talking about, we're getting a lot away from the music aspect. Yeah. But we're going more towards the selling, selling aspects of the idol culture. And selling is, again, very the different. character of the idol. Mm-hmm. The vehicle, oh, sorry, the music is just a vehicle through which you can sell that. Um, All right. Yes. I mean, AKB is probably the... Nogizaka is probably another thing. Yeah. I mean, those girls are working really, really hard. Oh, Don't get me hard. wrong. They it's really hard. hard for very little very pay. Hard. Most of it goes to the company. So respect for those girls they who are doing that because they are literally for their dream. They're sacrificing a lot of their lifetime. So mm. it's literally just the the business behind it that, that can be mm, quite rough. Mm, mm, hey, no shade to the girls. I've seen how hard they work, work how very much hard. they do, how they, they practice, how little they actually get paid. So it's a high-pressure environment. But uh, a lot of it is uh, monetized towards the big companies, I guess. Is that too critical? Are we too critical? Nah, it's fine. Oh, are we are too critical. <laughs> we are too critical. It's a nod. That's a head nod from our producer. Too <laughs> critical. Very critical. <laughs> all right. All right. Moving on. Anime songs. Yes. Of course. This any was songs. This that section I was excited about. <laughs> so that's, I think, a very, very Japan unique thing is that you can put anime into the top 
10. Yeah. That I love makes me really happy. What is interesting as well is in any song, it's any song that got used in an anime. So it could be a gacha pop song. It could mm-hmm. be a city pop song. It could be a metal song. It Ooh, could be an idol it. song. It could be whatever the hell song you want. It could be a love ballad. It could be anything. If it went in an anime, it's an any song. Mm. So it, yeah, it's interesting. It is not a genre, but it's a genre. I mean, some songs are very any song. Yeah, you have like a start rah, of the yeah, song, rah, and yeah. then it's like a da 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 da, so you can introduce the characters on screen, and yeah. then continuing the song, talking about something, and then we're gonna continue something da 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 da. There is a very pattern to the typical anime yeah. song, and we get to the chorus. We're gonna try really hard and yeah, give it our we're best. Work yeah. on our dreams, reach yes, for the sky. Reach, that kind yes. of stuff. You were definitely gonna have there. So yes. there's that's the typical ones, yeah. but then there are a couple of songs that we're attached to certain anime and they're not really as typically anime but they work but mentioning that um, I mean we've gone a little bit into the past but Rurouni Kenshin the anime Mm. that is said to be a legendary anime the director of Ash Japanese told me that recently because pretty much every artist that did an opening or an ending to that anime became hugely popular. Yeah, that's the way to do it. So, that's what they call it. Like that's it's a it. legendary anime. That is that the way to do it. And it, there were really good artists that also did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did release their songs on yeah, there. Yeah. So that is one of those. Sometimes recently, I see a lot of songs are produced by the voice actresses for the anime. Mm. So they generally mm. have the voice actresses sing the opening or sing the ending or sing multiple endings. Again, so they can sell a CD with the opening, the ending, and the multiple endings and don't have to give it or outsource it to another artist. And so, therefore, now voice actors also need to be idols. So exactly. it's not just your voice. It's the way you look, the way you present. That has changed a lot as well, which I thought, uh, personal opinion, I mean, it's great for for those who are, who are cute and look you're cute, but voice acting up until then used to be... This is like your chance at acting if you don't want to be on camera, if you don't want to be present and up front all the time. Mm. So it's like one of those like, wow, now that now the voice actors don't only have to do hard work for voice acting because that is really hard. They also have to now know how to sing on stage, perform on stage and maybe dance on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to have even more skills than they needed to have before. Mm-hmm. So more and more, it's gone a little bit towards that direction. I mean, it always has been there. But it's, I think it's gone a bit more extreme in recent years. Really. The girls have to do a lot of hard work. Actually, we've had Kagami Karen, a mm. voice actress, on our podcast in episode 37. And so episode 37, be sure to check that out. She's one of those hardworking voice actresses. Mm. She is cute. She has mm. to be on stage. She has to sing. She has to perform. And she's also like still working on her skills together with a couple of other voice and actresses. And she has to DJ. She had to learn how to mix yeah, as well. Yeah, she, oh, yeah, she's busy. So that's another thing to keep in mind that voice actresses have to do a really hard job right now. A lot of hard work. Right a lot of so hard work. We can split, I think, anime songs into... Songs that are produced by an outside actor, yeah, okay, or like outside band, yep, and then the ones that are produced by in-house. in-house. Mm. Which one do you prefer? Oh, listen, man, listen, Lady Beard will just listen to the song <clears throat> and make a decision. Lady Beard's not gonna go getting uppity if it's not mm. a song made by the voice actor yes. or the other way around. Lady Beard says, live and let live. Enjoy your anime song, regardless of how and by whom it was produced. Wonderful. Uh, a popular anime song uh, was done by the singer Nano. Nano! Who came in our podcast episode number 12 mm. as well. So be sure to check out Nano, No Pain, No Game, the T- theme song for Patoom. Well, of course, Patoom, yeah. Yep. Tell you what, though, that is really, yeah, that's the way to break your artist. You go from, you know, being... Uh, kind of a medium-sized artist, then you get the anime song and just goes Bam. straight away. Or happy around, Guru Guru DJ turn. The yep. opening of the anime featuring Karin Kagami. Kagami. Again, episode thirty-seven <laughs> of go. this podcast. She's awesome. You're learning so much about Japanese music, but there's one more. This is the big one. Are Take it away, Cat the Cat. It? We're gonna go old school. Oof. We're gonna go super old school. Oof. If you really want to impress your host, family, mom then you should know about this. <laughs> That's Enka. Enka. Enka, I would say in German, Volksmusik. Yeah, folk folk music, Japanese folk music. Yeah. Pretty much Japanese but folk But it's music. also, it's on the charts. It's folk music, but it's like pop music. It's on the charts. I mean, in German, let's be honest, we have folk music also yeah. on the charts. Could it be compared with country and western? Yeah. 
Yeah, I okay. I would say some okay. like some things that like generally the older con- generation listens mm. to. If someone younger dips into it, they also get very popular because the older generation is really happy that a new person is going right. into that. Genre. Really? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but uh, yeah, it became it's a genre. Enka is a genre that became popular in the mid 1960s, and it's very much they call it Japanese soul music, but I think it's more like Japanese folk music. It's very close to that kind of like, ah, oh, I feel for you. No, no. It's very much like, ah. Oh. But there are also some sounds in there with the voice going up and down melody-wise that might not sound like as easy to the ear as pop, for example. Is that right? Really? Mm-hmm. Can you bust out some anki? You know, go in the air? Can you oh my god, what was it? Tsugaru kaikyo Fuyuki shiki Wow, that was very good one. That was very nice. Something like that. that. Um, and there's like some lighter hearted ones. Oh. So that kind of, can you feel the kind of like, is there's a, tr- like some are really impactful mm. and some are a bit more like, ah, like, you're my darling. A lot of them are like about love, of course. Yeah, but it does kind of feel, they feel, don't they? Like it's a, a fun... romance song for the uh, over forties. <laughs> I mean, I've been to my my uh, my host mum. She she was practicing anka mm. and she was also performing anka. And what they generally wear for anka is these big sparkly dresses, <laughs> like really really big ball gowns, and they sing their song. And like everyone in the audience is like in their sixties and seventies. Really? it is like the music of that era. Mm. Um, if you happen to remember one song and burst that out at karaoke everyone is literally going to fall off the seats because young people are not expected to know and sing it as much but if you know at least one anchor song i think actually it because it is for a different generation if you go maybe for karaoke with your host family they're gonna love it really do you have any recommendations the, the songs people should learn Three anchor songs that I think you should know about if you want to look them up. Jero with Umi Yuki. <laughs> uh, so the artist's name is Jero? Jero. Okay. Fuyumi Sakamoto with Mata Kimi ni Koi Shiteru. Oh, that's nice. Or Ishikawa Sayuri with Amagi Goe. That one is a really good one. She does like, Amagi Goe. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like... what just happened now? What, what, pardon me? <laughs> that's like a real like... Really hard to learn kind of song, or Tsugaru Kaikyo, the one that I was singing early. Okay. Tsugaru Kaikyo, that one. These very, songs. very voice wise, very difficult to sing, actually. Yeah. You need to have some classes for those. These all sound to me like songs that, like, Sazaya san would be singing, like the mother from a family daily life anime. All these strike me as the kind of songs that the mother character would sing. Yeah, generally, if you see anchor artists, they're either wearing those big gold ball gowns or they're wearing like a really, really intricate kimono. Oh, so it oh, kind yeah, of ties okay, in yeah, again with like tradition, that kind mm, of thing. Mm, mm, mm. It's very yes. nice. It's very pleasant. Right. Oh. That has been a lot of facts lot of on info. Japanese music. What do you reckon about Japanese music overseas? What should be done to... Um, if, Populate if, it more? Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it it would be better to make it more accessible. A couple of years ago, for example, you couldn't see artists legally on YouTube because the licensing is so tight in Japan. That's very strange. Yeah, that a lot of like labels were like, no, we're not going to put our music on this thing called YouTube, which is a bit of a shame because that's how a lot of artists now reach audiences. And now we have, Mm. you know, Kari Pamu Pamu pretty much just aimed to get a hit, Mm -hmm. you know, go viral because now they realize, no, we actually need to put our artists out. Our artists have to have their social media and all of that. They were before gatekeeping their artists too much. Big time. And now they stopped gatekeeping, which has actually opened a lot of opportunities for artists abroad. When I was working with major labels in Japan, yeah, there was a lot of that gatekeeping. But then Mm. they went through a phase, or at least the people I was dealing with, when they were like, okay, so we want to expose it to the fans in Asia, but only Asia. So... Where are your Asian fans and how do we reach them? Oh. I'm like, dude, they're all on YouTube. All the fans are on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Just that's where you can. They're like, but how do we get only Asia outside Japan? I'm like, well, YouTube. They're like, yeah, but then everyone else can see it too. I'm like, yes. That's, that's not the, a bad thing. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, you know? That's it's the like, point. Everyone should be seeing it. Right. And I think it works also with them. Um, it's almost a connection, right? If a video gets a lot of views, people are going to watch it more. Of course. So why just lock it to, to one yeah. region when you can 
have it everywhere seen yeah. in the world. It's uh, you never know what might happen. And this, I think, goes back to uh, 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 culture and old school Japanese office culture、mm-hmm. and the hierarchies. And also, this is the other thing I've been told by you know my music industry mates: the guys at the very top of all the companies, as old dudes. It took at this them, point in time, still like that. Yeah, took their hierarchy, took their whole careers、mm-hmm. to get where they are.、Mm-hmm. So they don't want to give up any power because they had to get their asses kicked for forty years or something to get to this position of power. But now they don't know what to do in the modern landscape, so they just go、uh, and they pawn it off to their juniors. But then it goes down the chain until it gets pawned off to someone who's a relatively young person. And they're like, "Cool, let's do all the things that be required to populate, popularize our music overseas, because they're a youth. They understand what to do, but that's so different from what the older generation are used to. That the older, when they have to approve things with the older generation, then the older generation goes,、mm, 'But that's not what we've always done. So no, you're not allowed to do it. So there's this real.'" Generational clash at the moment in Japan,、mm, which the is the kind of glass ceiling that's not even made of glass between you, young and old,、yeah. men and women, of course, always, but young and old, there's still a big glass ceiling there. The older generation realizes and understands they have to globalize now, but they don't know how. And when the younger generation tells them how, they're just confronted by it, and the, they don't want to deal with it, right? And this is the other thing as well. If you're that old, you only have a few years left in your career, so why not just ride it out? Then you get your pension and everything, and just let the next one take care of it. You know, so. And that's why new concepts like the one, for example, for AKB can suddenly crash the market because if you bring that out on time and do it right, suddenly everything can change quite drastically.、Yeah. What TikTok is doing right now, we still have a quite drastic change now in the music industry because no one before, no one was like, "Oh, TikTok, we're not quite sure." And、mm. I was like, "We have to now." Yeah, everything's about the tiki toki. Exactly,、yeah. it's about the tiki toki now. But yes. Guys, that was a very, very filled, juicy、mm. episode about music here on the Cat with Beard podcast.、Mm-hmm. You know our socials by now.、Yeah. This is episode seventy. By the way, good job, episode seventy. Yeah, good job, yeah. Episode seventy. Thank、That's、you, thank、story. you, everyone. It's hard to get a podcast to number seventy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we did it. Good job. Thank you for your support, everybody. Ex- very seriously, episode seventy. Thank you, Kathy Cat. You've been, massive massive. been kicking ass. Thank you, lady. Every、day. episode, Kathy Cat. Hey, Kathy Cat. Yeah, pulls、lady、this、day. show over the line. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> lady shows up but just does color. Cat the cat actually provides information. I'm like, what's up with that? Oh no,、Cat、it wouldn't cat... be the same hey, without you. Cat the cat makes this thing happen, makes this operation run. Takahashi think... Sana, amazing producer. <laughs> Takahashi Sana,、mm, kicking ass, so kicking gold. All, all the info that sometimes we 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 are learning about as well. Wow, we learn a lot doing、saying. this. Yeah, seriously.、Mm-hmm. Now you learned about Enka, for example. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> all our wonderful guests we had. Thank you very much. Up、oh, until now, you've been wonderful. Fantastic. And our guests to be in the future. Exactly. I'm going to give you one question to all of our listeners before we close up the、all、podcast,、right. and the、Hit、question、us. is: What Japanese music do you listen to? Please let us know either in the comment section of this YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you just listen to this, or if you are listening to this on any kind of podcasting device. Then check out our Twitter. Cat with beard from Japan, and let us know what Japanese music you're listening to right、uh, now. And I'd appreciate if you appreciate it if some of the Japanese music you listen to is my group Baby Beard. Of course, got a new member. We got some songs on that. Go listen to us on the song on the jigs. Exactly.、Thank、All right. So we see you soon for another episode of、oh, Cat, Cat with, with Beard. beard. I'm Beardzan. Mata ni. My lieblings.